U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo is on what was originally billed as an eight-nation tour of the Middle East. But today he took a detour. Flying out of Amman, Jordan, he made a surprise visit to Baghdad, Iraq, before continuing on his planned itinerary to Egypt. Later in this week, his stops include Saudi Arabia and Qatar. Pompeo was trying to, quell, trying to quell concerns raised in the region by President Trump's abrupt decision to pull U.S. troops out of Syria. In Baghdad, he met Iraqi Prime Minister Adal Abdul Mahdi, but he then flew to Erbil, the capital of Iraq's Kurdish region, to meet with Masoud Barzani, the leader of the Kurdistan Democratic Party. Well, joining us for more in the studio is Professor Uzi Rabi, director of the Moshe Dayan Center at Tel Aviv University. But first, let's go to Washington and our diplomatic correspondent, Nina Lawson. And Nina, a surprise by Mike Pompeo. What was he looking to achieve there in Iraq? Well, it was a surprise because these kind of trips are always very tight on security, uh, Kalev. But this was something of a follow-up to uh, President Trump's brief visit uh, to Iraq uh, over Christmas. Uh, Pompeo also stopping by a U.S. Army base there. But I think the most important thing about this trip was to meet with the Iraqi leadership. And uh, the context of all this is, of course, Iran. Uh, we have to remember that the U.S. consulate in Basra in southern Iraq was ordered evacuated by Pompeo at the end of September uh, because of security concerns emanating from Iran. That's a very unusual step for a U.S. consulate to actually be closed, and it remains so. And uh, we have to remember that uh, Iraq is in many ways Iran's, one of Ra Iran's last remaining financial lifelines. So those are the kind of discussions uh, that Pompeo would have been having about Iraq's security vis-a-vis -vis Iran. And Uzi, obviously, perhaps some concern among uh, the U.S. allies in the Middle East following the, that decision, that announcement to pull out from Syria. Perhaps this is some uh, degree of damage control by Pompeo and how successful could he be? Definitely. I think that what uh, uh, Pompeo is doing is just to alleviate some of the fears and the concerns that many, many, let us say, pro-Western or pro-American parties and players in, uh, in the Middle East do feel these days after, as we say, actually this, this decision to pull out from Syria. What he is trying to do is just to, to talk to the main Arab players, which means actually Saudi Arabia and Egypt, talk to the Kurds because they seem to be falling into the cracks and they are going actually to suffer from what I uh, would say kind of a Turkish uh, bid for domination in North Syria after the American pull out. And of course Israel is one of the players that should be uh, talked to and every player I would say is getting into sort of a bazaar, Middle Eastern bazaar, trying to glean something from the Americans, either tactically or strategically, in order to make it up to itself. So this is what we have now. I think, Alev, that we cannot actually underestimate the very, very crucial significance of what happened here in the Middle East. This is the first time for uh, in, the, in the modern history of the Middle East that we don't have kind of a Western bloc inside the region. It is a new Troika, Russians, Persians, Turks, a totally different political culture that is going I, to dominate want, the region. And I want to focus on the Kurds in particular. He met, of course, with Masoud Barzani, who heads Iraqi Kurds and U.S. forces staying in Iraq. Are they going to be able to offer any kind of comfort or protection to the Kurds in Syria? from Iraq? Well, this is something that is very, very uh, interesting and we have to wait and see. Let me just remind you that what Bolton did yesterday in uh, Turkey is actually to come up with kind of an additional condition to Erdogan by which to say that the simple fact that America is pulling out, it is not to say that you are free to uh, commit or to, to, to carry out any, any uh, let's say, military uh, kind of initiative in North, in North uh, Syria without getting kind of an approval from the United States to do so. This tells you that the Americans really feel that they have actually to make sure that Kurds are not going to be neglected and pay kind of a bloody price 
especially when it comes to the north of Syria. Right. The, the Kurds of Iraq and the north of Iraq can be something which should be uh, actually uh, considered as a base from which to take care of this whole issue of the Kurds of North Syria. And of course the Kurds have been in these kind of difficult positions to, uh, and been Definitely. disappointed in the past. I mean, let's just focus on the next stop of Pompeo's trip there in Egypt. That's not a secret. In fact, he's planning to speak out there. What can we expect? Well, at the moment, uh, Kalev, uh, this uh, visit to Egypt is kind of shrouded in mystery. What we do know is that he aims to give a speech much in the same, uh, not the same spirit, but uh, in the same kind of way that Obama gave a speech in Cairo uh, way back in 2009. And a lot has changed in those last 10 years. It's almost hard to imagine at this point that that speech ever happened at all. Uh, for Obama, he gave a speech at Cairo University. It was one of the first things he did. Uh, to mark the beginning of his presidency, and it was entitled A New Beginning. Uh, of course, since then, we've seen the Arab Spring, uh, we've seen civil wars in uh, Syria, Libya, Yemen, and uh, perhaps Obama's uh, vision of the Middle East, and certainly a peaceful Middle East, didn't exactly uh, translate into, into what he said in that speech. Uh, but uh, Pompeo is deliberately staging his own Middle East policy speech in Cairo. We don't know the venue yet. We don't know the timing. We don't know the audience. And um, be sure that uh, this will allude in some way to the proposed Middle East peace plan that everyone's expecting to be rolled out from the White House soon. And also the focus will be very much on Iran. Well, was he briefly, will we hear some kind of Trump doctrine on the Middle East in this speech? Well, it wouldn't be a doctrine, but it would be very, very uh, uh, simple as that to tell everybody we are still here to protect you, but only if you are going to unite among themselves and come up with kind of a camp by which to actually cope with the uh, dangers of radicalism in the Middle East. What the Americans would like to do is to have Saudi Arabia, Egypt and Israel in one front they could actually serve as boots on the grounds for the Americans, and the Americans from behind are going to support. If this is a promise, if this is a hope, this would be the doctrine. I don't think that there is much hope for kind of a better condition in the Middle East. We have to take care of ourselves, and this is basically the bottom line of what the Americans say here. Uzi, I want to ask you about something. My co-anchor, Nurit Ben, is at a conference in New Delhi this week, and there she spoke with Russia's Deputy Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Rybakov, who told her Russia tried and partly succeeded to diminish Iranian military presence in the immediate vicinity of the Israeli border. We wanted to go even further. It didn't work because we wanted this in exchange for some suspension of the U.S. secondary sanctions on Iran, and apparently that was not successful. But is that something the U.S. and Israel should consider a trade-off? Are sanctions Definitely. for reduced Definitely. Iranian Definitely. presence? Uh, what I think is that it's a new situation. Israel must be much more creative. We have to just find out ways by which actually to talk and dialogue with the Russians. And definitely, the Russians, they would like to have kind of a stability in Syria, even partial. For that, they would like actually to block Iran. So here is the thing. If Israel is coming up with something which is pretty creative, supported by the Americans, the Russians would buy that. This is a byproduct of the new geopolitical chessboard. All right, Professor Uzi Rabi and, of course, our Nina Lawson in Washington.